Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. For the Bible says, I was glad when it said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We welcome you this Sunday morning to the C.N. Jenkins Memorial Presbyterian Church. I am Pastor Cannon. I'm so glad that you are a part of this worship service. On this Sabbath day, we know that we would not be here without the Spirit of the Lord. And in so doing, we would like to invoke God. God's presence now to be upon our service. I'm singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell mother not to mourn. mourn. Well, 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 Mary. Tell mother not to mourn. Because there was army. Oh, you know that they drowned. Drowned in the Red Sea. Oh, Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Mother not to mourn. Mother, don't you mourn. Hey, I'm singing Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell Mother not to mourn. Mother, don't you mourn. Well, 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 oh, Mary. Don't you weep. Tell Mother not to mourn. Mother, don't you mourn. Hey, because there was army. There was army. Oh, you know that they Tell mother not to mourn. Mother, don't you mourn. Hey, I'm saying if, if I could. Yeah, you know that I would. I yeah. Sure would. I put my foot on the rock. And on the rock. When Moses stood. Moses stood. Oh, cause there was army. There was army. Oh, you know that they drowned. Drowned in the Red Sea. Tell mother not to mourn. Don't you mourn. Hey, I'm saying if, if I could. Oh, you know that I would. I should. I would stand on the rock where Moses stood. Moses stood. Cause there was army. army. Oh, you know that they drowned. Drowned in the Red Sea. I'm saying. Don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep? I said, Mary, don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep? I said, Mary, don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep? I said, Mary, don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep? I said, Mary, don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep? Mary, don't you weep? Oh, Mary, don't you weep? Don't you weep? Don't you weep? Don't you weep? Weep, say Mary, don't oh, you weep. Mary, Mary, don't, Mary you weep. don't you weep. Oh, Mary, don't, Mary, don't, you, don't weep. you weep. Yeah. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Mary, don't you weep. Don't weep, Mary. Arrows on me. You know that they drown. drown, drown. The Mary. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Tell mother not to mourn. Mother, don't you mourn. Eternal God, we stand before your heavenly throne this morning to give you thanks for an opportunity to worship and not to weep. An opportunity to come together, God, and not to stay apart. An opportunity, God, to be refreshed and renewed by your word. God, we stand on the promises that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And so, God, there may be some who are weeping today over hurts and over pains. God, there may be some who may be crying out today over their current living situations. God, somebody's weeping because of a crisis that they find themselves in. But, God, may we be rest assured that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning. And to someone right now, we say good morning. Good morning to a new day. Good morning to a new opportunity. Good morning uh, to a life afresh and anew. We praise you, we honor you, we worship you, we magnify your name. And we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, let all who are able say amen. 
Say amen. Say amen again. To God be the glory. Great things God has done. We are grateful for the musical offering this morning. I am indeed happy to introduce to you Take Four. Take Four. That's who they are. That's who they are. They are doing the thing, and so we are grateful. Y'all don't realize what a joy it is for me to stand in this pulpit. Yo, we've got the AV team and the musicians and Tyrians and the health folk here. It's, it's not a whole lot of folk, but I just enjoy being in the company of God's people. So I'm probably looking at more people that are in the sanctuary, but let me tell you, we're having a good time here in the house of the Lord. So you might hear some amens in the background today. You might hear a shout and you won't see them running around the sanctuary because they got to stay six feet apart. But let me tell you, they're running in their souls. So I am grateful. Today, today we close out a series of sermons to which we've been preaching on Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And I thank Dr. Monroe and the musicians for weaving in all of these songs that were really intentional to work with the scripture. And I invite you to turn now to the Gospel of John, John chapter 11, as we will read verses 1 through 7 from a New Living Translation. John 11, verses 1 through 7, and let us read the word together. If you're able to stand right in your home or wherever you are, I invite you to do it as we honor God and read the word. A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. This is the Mary who later poured the expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick. So the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will, be received, will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judah. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And for our preaching time today, I call your attention to verse 6 and 7 of this text. For John 11, 6 and 7 says, and he stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judah. He stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judah. With the aid of the Holy Spirit and your encouragement, I want to lift up this text and for a brief moment preach today on our subject, it's time to get up. It's time to get up. My friends, of all the things that can be experienced in life and of all the things that can be shared, I have found, y'all, that there is none more lasting and none more meaningful than a word. Can I get an amen right there? Let me say it this way. Of all the things that can come your way and of all the things that can impact your life, there is none more expressive and none more powerful than a word. And when I say a word, I don't want you to go deep on me this morning because I'm just talking about a word. A word like hope and joy and peace and happiness. A, a word like gentle and comfort, rebound and do over. Okay, I know that's two words, but just work with me. A, a word like apology, forgiveness, empathy, and courtesy. A, a word like no Yes, and I'm sorry. O oops, there I go again, putting two words together. But, but, but work with me here. A word like politics, democracy, inclusion, and fairness. A, a word like honesty, diversity, justice, and equality. A, a word like redeemed, revived, 
recharged and resurrected. You, you get my point this morning because I, I just want you to know of all the things that, that, that we receive in life and of all the things that, that we experience in life, there is nothing like a word and somebody watching this Sunday morning you know that somebody has deposited a word in your spirit somebody has downloaded a word on your hard drive somebody has given you a word in the sphere of your influence and that word has kept you going that word has delivered you from pain that word has lifted your spirits come on help me preach that that word that somebody gave you will be with you till the end and and of all the things things that can be experienced in life and of all the things that can be shared I stand before you today and there is nothing more powerful than a word and my friends when that word comes from almighty God making it the word of God there is nothing else that needs to be said somebody ought to type amen right there when that word comes from God, that means it is a word of God, that, that that is a word that comes from him to humankind. There is nothing more powerful than the word. Philosophy with its unending questions fails in comparison to the word. Science with its concepts and fundamental beliefs does not measure up to the word. It, it, if you take all the prominent speakers from all ages and compare their texts and their words, none of them can stand against the word of Almighty God for, for their words to be sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. There, there has never been an individual and never a group my friends, whose words carry more authority than the word of Almighty God. For God's word, y'all, has the power to change lives. Can you say amen to their God's word has the power to lift up bow down heads. God's word has the power to soothe our moments of misery for it is in God's word that healing for the hurt come and mercy for the most merciless come and help for the helpless comes and pardon for the prisoners come. In God's word, God's word is defense for the defeated, grace for the guilty, victory for the victimized and regeneration for the ruin. God's word y'all there's compassion for the condemned cleansing for the corrupt strength for the weak and hope for the hopeless it is God's word that instructs us to live righteously and it's God's word that tell us when we're not living holy but you see y'all uh, God's word is so clear and so powerful and so on point that sometimes we skip right over it and miss its meaning running to see what the end's going to be. Come on to the text because I don't want you to miss it this morning. I want you to take a deep breath right now. I want you to relax your breathing. I want you to inhale and exhale and hear this passage one more time for the bible says in john chapter 1 chapter 11 verse 1 a man named lazarus was sick that's all it says it says a, a man named lazarus was sick i don't know what caused it to be Lazarus becoming sick. Don't know what enabled the sickness. Don't know where he got the sickness from and cannot tell you if it was contagious. I just know a man named Lazarus was sick. Was it man-made? Was it pre-existing? Was it a virus? Or could it have been prevented if he had uh, affordable health care? I, I don't know, but the Bible says he was sick. I don't know, y'all, the, the, the Bible says the sickness that Lazarus had caused him to, it's just described that he was sick. Now, now what's critical is that according to the Bible, the, his sickness, Deacon Lisa, would not lead to death. 
For it says in verse 4, it says, uh, uh, Lazarus' sickness will not lead will end in death. No, it happens for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. Y'all don't miss that. It says his sickness will not lead to death. It's happened for the Son of God, for the glory of God, that we are, God will receive the glory. And I must say here, my friends, if there was ever a time that the church, and particularly the black church, needed to hear a word this morning, it is that sickness that we are experiencing and the sickness we are living with in our world will not lead to death. Come on, help me preach this day. The, the sickness, my friends, a, a black man being shot in the back while his children witnessed it all, it would not lead to death. The sickness of black women, y'all, being disrespected and abused, it will not lead to death. Death. The sickness of more black and brown people being gunned down in the streets by a teenage white boy while the police wave him on through the crowd, y'all, that will not lead to death. The, the sickness of being lynched with knees on your neck while systematic racism looks dead in the camera as though ain't nothing changed. This sickness will not lead to death. The sickness will not lead to death. In the words of Billy holiday as she would say southern trees bearing strange fruit blood on the leaves and blood at the root black bodies swinging in southern breeze strange fruit hanging from popular trees y'all this sickness will not lead to death this sickness right where right is wrong and wrong is right where where those who should be condemned are being set free from prison this sickness will not lead to death the sickness is playing politics and not giving good leadership. The sickness when it comes to obeying the not obeying the science and listening to the fact. The sickness, though it looks to, at a dismal end, y'all, it will not lead to death. And the good news, the good news of the text, y'all, the good news that helps us come together for worship on this Sabbath day, I, I want you to know is that whatever you are going through, wherever you find yourself, wherever you may, 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 may whatever dealing with, I want you to know it will not lead to death. I, and I want somebody right now to confess it out of your mouth and into the hand of Almighty God that whatever sickness that has attacked you, whatever challenge that has overcome you, whatever trick that the devil has played on you, I need you to say before Almighty God, this sickness will not lead to death. My cancer will not lead to death. My headaches will not lead to death. My firing from a job will not lead to death. My breakup of my marriage will not lead to death. A pookie getting arrested and going to jail will not lead to death. Nisi getting pregnant out of, out of marriage will not. Whatever it is that you have gone through in life, somebody ought to give God praise right there. Why should you praise God? Because you thought it would lead to your demise. You thought it would take you out. You thought that that was your last breath, but thanks be to God. Look at you this Sunday morning watching me on the YouTube, watching on the Facebook. You thought it was over, but your sickness did not lead to death. The good news, the good news that you have to confess on this Sabbath day is the reason it did not lead to death is because you stand on a word. You stand on the word, a word, a word. You know that it will not lead to death because uh, you're going to rely on the truth. Uh, the word of God is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. You know it will not lead to death because you simply quote the word of Almighty God. It says, and I know my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches. And go. You stand on the word and you say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear nor evil. You stand on the word. You say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You stand on the word. Take your delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. You stand on the word and 
saying, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, giving thanks to Almighty God, and the peace that passes all understanding shall be with you. Stand on the word, and you declare that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, then I shall be. You stand on the word. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thy own understanding. You stand on the word. If I am sick, let the elders of the church come and lay hands on me, and they pray in the name of Almighty God, and the prayer of the righteous will avail them. You stand on the word. Take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself, but seek ye first the kingdom of all. My, you stand on the word. What, 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 what does the word say? Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. You stand on the well. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You stand on the word. I know my future is in front of me. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. You stand on the word. Oh, my friends, you know, you know, you know that this sickness, this sickness will not come to death, will not come to death. Let me, let me, let me. You see, I'm excited about the word because I believe that's somebody's truth, that's somebody's deliverance, that somebody's prayer being answered right there, that you know you got a word, and that word is what you're holding on to, and that word that keeps you going. The resurrection of Lazarus in the text, y'all, is all about getting up time. Can you say get up time? Matter of fact, just type in get up time. Just type in right now, I'm going to get up. If you can't type all that, just put G G U G U get up. That's, that's all that is. Just, it's get up time. I've got to get up from where I was. I've got to get up from where I've been. Come on, James Brown. Get, 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 get. Okay, anyway, let me get back to the text. The resurrection of Lazarus. Lazarus well, was a certain man, and the Bible says he was sick. This story, this story in the Bible, Pastor Donna, is one where William Barclay says there is no parallel uh, whatever to the raising of a man who had been dead for four days and whose body had began to decompose. There, there was no explanation for this text to really be there except that the writer wanted us to recognize that though in Jewish customs they believed the spirit hovered over the body for three days and Jesus waited till the fourth day to come and to resurrect Lazarus he was proven brother George that in essence that though the custom is there's a chance they can come back to life in three days Jesus says I'm gonna go against custom Jesus was saying that I'm going to go against provisional wisdom. Jesus was saying I'm going to go against the system. And the system I'm about ready to break down is the same system that Dr. King stood on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial some 57 years ago and gave that speech, I have a dream. It's the system that on, March, that on the march on Washington on, 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 on August the 28th uh, in 1963 when more than 200,000 folk and up to maybe 300,000 gathered and they stood there and it's the same system that on this past Friday we still had folks standing there shouting for liberty shouting for justice and shouting for what is right. 100 years ago after women got the right to vote we're still asking for the civil rights bill that is 55 years old to be re ratified. I believe that we've got a system my my friends that's designed to kill us but Jesus wait in the text here beyond the four days to prove that the system is wrong can I talk to somebody this Sunday morning because you need to realize is that the reason Jesus came to Lazarus against the system because Lazarus has a connecting with Jesus like you and me what you're saying Reverend Lazarus had a connection with Jesus because of the name Jesus and 
and Lazarus, okay? Lazarus comes from the word Eleazar. Eleazar, y'all, simply means God is my help. Can I just pause right there for a little bit and let somebody know is that your name means something to Almighty God. Your name means, means significance to Almighty God. When you are a child of Almighty God, all you have to do is just call God because God knows your name. Come here, Tasha Cobb. He call, he knows my name, whatever that name is. Now, you may think that your name is Rochelle and Robert and and Ricky. You may think your name is Patricia and Patty and, and Mary Elizabeth. No, your name in God's eyes is redeemed. Your name in God's eyes is saved. Your name in God's eyes is washed in the blood. Come on, will you give God praise right there that God calls you something differently. Now, people may call you one thing, and I've said it before, it's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. It's not what your, what your government is it's your name is. It's what your name in the land book of life is. That is the difference, y'all. And this text helps us realize at the end, we're going to get there, but I told you to stay with me. At the end, when Jesus calls out Lazarus' name, something happens. But don't forget, God is my help. That is what Lazarus is holding on. In the grave, God is still saying, I'm your help. In the tomb, God is still saying, I'm your help. Up, confined in grave clothes. God, you're not, you're not getting this thing because somebody needs to hear in the pandemic, God is saying, I am your help. How do you say that, Reverend? Because I want you to see what happens through the story. The Bible says that Lazarus is sick. Mary and Martha send word to Jesus that he should come and, and take care of his sick friend. Why is that important? Because all actuality, Jesus could have spoken the word from where he was and Lazarus would have been healed. Jesus could have sent somebody else, one of the disciples, to touch him. But Mary and Martha were in a situation, y'all, like you and I, recognize that sometimes it's not Dr. Ruth, it's not Dr. Phil, it's not Oprah, but it's Dr. Jesus. Can I get an amen right there? Sometimes it's not your pediatrician, it's not your internist, it's not even your oncologist. You're going to have to call on Jesus. Every now and then, not your banker, not your baker, not your business person, and not your preacher. You're going to have to call on Jesus. And Mary and Martha teach us a valuable lesson that when you call on Jesus, you have to call with expectation. Expectation and that is something that the church needs to re-engage with. Expectation, that is something that we need to embrace. What you're saying, Reverend? I'm saying we've got to expect that when the word of God goes out to somebody, it's going to change their situation. We've got to expect that when the word of God is preached, it's going to, going to be a seed planted into somebody's soul that with the watering of the Holy Spirit, it will bear much fruit. we got to expect, y'all, that when we cover somebody with the word, be it our children or our grandchildren, our significant other or our neighbors, we've got to expect that it will be a shield and a fence, a hedge of protection all around them. We have to have the a blessed assurance that the word of God will make a difference. That's why Mary and Martha made this plea. But as the Bible says, Jesus stayed where he was about 20 miles away two more days. Jesus delayed, but he did not deny. Can I talk to somebody this Sunday morning? Because you see, sometimes we can misinterpret our delays as a distraction, but our delay is not a distraction as much as it is a preparation for the praise. Ooh, I said something good. Let me back it up and give it to you again. Our delay is not a distraction. It is really a preparation for what God has in store for us to give God praise. Look what the text says. The Bible says, in essence, if we hold fast to the promise, the promise of God, I never leave you nor forsake you. The promise of God, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. The promise of God, I know you're in because I made 
made your beginning. The Bible says that we hold fast to the promises. There are three things we ought to get. Well, here it is. Number one, if we trust God, even when life does not make sense, there are promises we can hold on to. What are those promises? It is, I will be with you. Come on, type amen right there. What's the promise? I'm trusting God, and it ain't making sense right now. I will protect you. What's the promise? That, that, that I will be your strength. What's the promise? That I will answer you. What's the promise? That I will provide for you. What's the promise? I will give you peace. What's the promise? That I will always love you. Friends, we've got to trust God. Mary and Martha trusted God in the person of Jesus Christ. That's why they sent the clarion call. Jesus, the one that you love, is sick. Now, the Bible tells us, my friends, is that though Jesus waited two days, the, the body of Lazarus died. The body died. When Jesus arrived, y'all, is now four days later, professional mourners were still with Mary and Martha. And the Bible says is that though Jesus did not show up, Jesus was still ready to show out. How can you say that? Because of the promises of God. And here it is. You've got to believe God is present even though you don't see God working. Can I talk to somebody this Sunday morning? Because we don't know what the end's going to be on this pandemic. But I just believe God is working in the laboratory right now. God is working with researchers right now. God is taking some engineer from A&T and from Tuskegee and from Howard and from Johnson C. Smith, and God has put them in a laboratory right now, and they're mixing things up in, in beakers, and they're burning things up, and they're injecting them into mice. I just believe that God is doing some great, I don't see it, but I believe it's going to happen. Is there anybody here right now who can testify that that is your story? You didn't see God working it out, but in the end, it was all right. You didn't see how God was crossing T's and dotting I's, but in the end, God God worked that thing out. You didn't know how in the world you were going to get through when you had more month than you had money. Come on, give God praise right there. You know as well as I do on the 30th of August, you didn't have as much money or bills paid as you had on the 13th of August, but thanks be to God when you hit the switch this morning, your YouTube came on, your lights came on, your air conditioning. Is there anybody going to give God praise right there? Can you type gas right there in the chat box? Can you type home right there in the chat box? Can you type Can you type YouTube right there? Whatever it is, can you type another day right there in the chat box? Because you know that God being God all by God's self, when you can't see God, you have to believe God anyhow. Oh, the good news, the good news, y'all, is we have to recognize also is that the promises of God, they bring us back to what I said two weeks ago, that a delay, y'all, does not mean a denial. Understand that a delay is simply, y'all, a proper a prep preparation for the promises. Uh, your delay, God is getting you ready for the promise. You were not ready to receive what God had for you to receive before the pandemic. So God has caused some things to happen that you're spending more time. Amen. I pray that you are. You're spending more time in the word than you are worrying. I pray that you're spending more time on your knees than you are being needy. I pray that you are spending more times in prayer than you are prying in the other folks' business. It, it, it's that God had to delay some things so that you could be prepared for the promises. You see, the Bible tells us is that Jesus speaks to Martha, Jesus speaks to Mary, and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. What you're looking for, you, 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 you're looking at. What, you, what you're leaning on, you, you're leaning into. What, 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 you're, what, what, what you're waiting for, you're watching right now. I am the resurrection and the life. And somebody needs to hear that word this morning, that God tells you, I am your resurrection. I am your life. I, I am the one that you've been looking for. I am the one you've been waiting for. Je Jesus is saying, no need for you to continue to 
spend sleepless nights and pull your hair out and scratch your head. And Jesus says, I am that what you're looking for. You just simply have to believe. Now, understand this, y'all. That's a good word when things are going well. But when things are not going well, when the bottom has fallen out, when you do have some prescriptions that you can't pay for and you got some medications that are not working and you got some situations or as we say at 1421 Stakes or Avenue situations that are just causing you headache and heartache, you still have to pray to, okay, let me say it this way. Martha says, in essence, Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Now, you know, that is, that ain't, that ain't nothing but straight up. Martha Louise, who sits on the third pew at your church, who got an opinion, who got the Holy Ghost, but they sure enough got something to say about everything. Jesus, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus, if you would have shown up when you called, when we called you, Jesus, I pray my tithes, I go to Bible study on Zoom, Jesus, I give to the mission program, Jesus, I'm being kind to my neighbors, and look at all the hell I'm still, if you would have fulfilled what you said, my brother would not have died, and, and I ain't want to hate on Martha, I really want to lift up the Martha or the Mark in you, whoever you may be, to say that here's what happens, the text says that Martha said, and even though even now, you are able to heal. And I just got to give a shout right there to somebody who has an even now prayer. Because you know your cup is empty, but even now, I know the Lord will make a way out of no way. I, I know you got a doctor's appointment in the morning and the situation don't look good, but even now, God, on Sunday, I'm going to give you praise. I, I know that things are not good in your household. Ain't nobody talking and ain't nobody making love, but even now, God, I want to give you joy. I, I know somebody right now got more month than you got money. Reverend, I still got bills and the 31st is coming. The light's going off on Tuesday, but even now, you you can give God. Is there anybody right now who has an even now praise? Even now God I can stand. Even now God I can lift my hands. Even now God I can shout hallelujah. Even now God I know that this too will pass. Even now God I know that black boys and black men and black girls and black women will be respected one day. Even now God with all the stuff happening around me I know that you gonna work this thing out even now all oh, the good news y'all is that when you pray an even now prayer that builds your relationship with the Lord and recognize this my friends that God is more concerned with your relationship than your resume come on that's your tweet right there God 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 does not look at our relationships but God looks Look, look, look at our resume, but God looks at our relationship. What's, what's our relationship with the Lord? What, what, what is our connection with the Lord? I, I, I learned, learned this some years ago, y'all, when, 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 when I normally, normally dress, when I normally dress, I, I put on my watch, I put on, put on my rings, I put on my glasses. Well, I put on the glasses first because I can't see how to put on my watch. Don't hate, don't hate, don't hate. Everybody over 50, you just type, that's me, that's me, amen. And sometimes, sometimes I, I got the contacts in and can't see them. I pull the glass, put the glasses on top of it, and that, anyway. Anyway, so I put on my glasses, I put on my watch, and I put on my ring, put on my rings. And what I found, y'all, that one, one, one day experience, brother David, when I left, when I left the house, I put on the glass, put on the watch, but I forgot my ring. Forgot my rings, and y'all, I, I went through the day, and as I was going through the day meeting people, and, and as I met some folk at lunch, uh, well, confession is good for the soul, bad for the reputation. One of, one of the people at lunch I was with, y'all, they, they started smiling at me, and I started smiling back at them, and we had conversations. So of course, the first thing I say, well, you go to church. They didn't want to talk about church. They want to talk about something else. And I said, uh, well, what's your relationship like with the Lord? 
But of course, they weren't talking about relationship with the Lord. They wanted other kind of relationships, y'all. And, and then I kept on pressing the issues about, you know, how you giving back to the community. And they were not going to give back to the community. They wanted to give something to me. I'm just telling you what happened, y'all. And, and this person, this person said, they said, well, you know, I thought we could have a different kind of conversation. I said, why? They said, because I looked at your hand and you didn't have a ring on your finger. And I said, oh, I'm sorry that I don't have a ring on my finger, but I got love in my heart for the one who does have a ring on the finger. Can I talk to somebody this Sunday morning? When you have the love of Jesus in your heart, it don't matter if you got a four-inch cross hanging around your neck or 12-inch Bible under your arm, CDs from Shirley Caesar or James Cleveland. When you got the love of God in your heart, you have a sense of relationship. And that relationship is something that keeps you going. That relationship is something that makes you stronger. That relationship is something that keeps can you give God praise right there that you've got a relationship and regardless of how you act, God still loves you. Regardless of how you perform, God still cares. Regardless of what you may say, God says you are my, that, that's a word, that's a word, that's a word, that's a word. Je Jesus says, well, where is Lazarus? Where is he? They say he's in the tomb. And recognize this, y'all. The Bible, John eleven thirty five, 35, the one verse that all of y'all know. Type it right now. <laughs> Jesus wept. Well, that's all you know. Amen. The Bible says Jesus wept. He, he wept, y'all, not just because his friend Lazarus was dead, but he wept, y'all, because he saw that those around him did not see the glory of Almighty God. Jesus goes to the tomb, y'all, and he goes to the tomb not as one to weep, but he goes to as one ready to do battle. Now, I got to put my feet down right there and give God praise is that when you call God to go to your tomb, those tombs of death, those tombs of destruction, those tombs of hurt, those tombs of pain. When you call on God, you've got to recognize, y'all, that Christ does not come to the tomb of your need as one who is a spectator, but Christ comes like a warrior preparing for a match. Come on, Wakanda. You've got to realize when Christ comes to your tomb, Christ is coming because Christ is going to war. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord. The fight that you have is not yours, it's the Lord. When you call on Almighty God, you've got to believe God is coming with hammer, with nail. God is coming with strength and with power. God is coming with everything in his arsenal. God is coming with Gabriel. God is coming with lightning. God is coming with thunder. Whatever it is in your tomb, God is coming. And when he comes, he's going to call it out. He's going to call it out. He's going to call it out. The text tells us, tells us, it tells us, y'all, is that Jesus came to resurrect, not, res not resuscitate. Let me make a point on that. He came to resurrect, not resuscitate. Now, there's nothing wrong with resuscitation because some of us right now, that's all we need is a little resuscitation. Resuscitation is the action of process of reviving someone from unconsciousness or apparent death. Brothers, brothers, if you ain't paid child support, you need to resuscitate that thing. Sisters, sisters, if, if, if you are, are not using your head but using your body to get your rent paid, you need to resuscitate. Young folk, hear what I'm saying, and I say that in all love, because once upon a time, Dr. Monroe, we was young, amen, but, but now we's old, that's what the Bible says. So, so young folk, there are some things you need to resuscitate. Respect, honor, love. You know, yes ma'am and yes sir would get you a long way. You know, pulling your britches up off your butt, not showing your underwear, that's gonna take you a long way. You're going to have to resuscitate some things and some respect to some elders, but also to yourself. The Bible says is that Jesus came to resurrect Lazarus from the grave. And he came, y'all, to resurrect Lazarus from the grave because of what the Bible had already said in the word. Because I don't want you to forget verse 7 of this text to which we read earlier says, Finally, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judah. 
Let's go back to Judah, back to Judah. What is Judah? Judah, y'all, is a Hebrew word that comes, y'all, in the Greek form that simply means praise. Okay. Jesus recognizing that in the land of Judah, they're trying to kill him. In the land of Bethany, they want to arrest him. But Jesus says, I'm willing to go into the den with the lions to give God praise. Jesus says to his disciples, I'm willing to go into a place where others have not gone. I'm ready to do some things that others have not done. I'm ready to be something that nobody has never been in order to give God praise. And you know, that is exactly how I want to close my little sermon this morning. Because when you see how God brings us through things, when you see how God works in the midst of stuff, when you see how God is still able to do amazing things through the power of Almighty God, that's enough to give God praise. When you see that you can be living with cancer but still be a phenomenal movie star. When you see you can be dying in some folks' eyes but living in other folks' eyes. When you see you can stand and not only be a Marvel superhero like Chad with Bozeman, you can also see yourself bringing history to life in the film of James Brown, Get On Up. You can see, you can tell the story of 42 and James, uh, of, 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 of Jackie Robinson. You can see how somebody can go from a fictional character to a realistic third good marshal still battling cancer. You can give God, you're not getting it. You see, the good news of the text with Chad with Bozeman's story, y'all, maybe you've seen it on Gold Set or maybe you've seen it on YouTube, is that he is who he is because of what God did through somebody else. And there's somebody watching right now. You ought to give God thanks for what God has done to you through somebody. Else. It may have been Big Mama or Big Daddy. It may have been an uncle or an auntie. It may have been somebody that you don't know by name, but you know by their actions. You ought to give God praise right there. You know you are who you are and what you have and where you live and what you drive and how you talk and how you move and how you groove, not because of your own ability, but because of somebody else. What's Chadwick? Somebody else. It was Denzel Washington. Denzel who paid for the summer school for him to go to act. It was Denzel and Felicia Rashad who put the word into them so that these students from Howard University could go to acting school. It was Denzel Washington who paid the tuition. Somebody in school right now ought to give God praise that somebody's paying your tuition. Somebody's paying a bill. Somebody's buying a book. The good news is when somebody poured into Chadwick Bozeman, it was Chadwick Bozeman who put from Anderson, South Carolina who is right there, a good old homeboy who goes all the way from Anderson, South Carolina to Hollywood because of what God had done in his life. And this is a brother who was unafraid and unashamed to give God praise. You see, the good news, the good news, my friend, is when you know where your praise comes from, when you know the word you're holding on to, you cannot help but to go back to your Judah, go back to your house of praise, go back to your, your place of restoration. Jesus knew that they wanted to kill him, but the Bible says that he said, now let us go back to Judah. Let us go back to Judah. Let me see. Let me see. I think I was talking too fast, uh, Deacon Lisa, so I'm going to break it down like a fraction and give it this way. He says, let us go back to Judah. And the disciples thought they were going to Judah to raise Lazarus from the dead. But Jesus had something greater in store for them. Because if, you, if you're able, I want you to pick up your Bible and I need you to turn to John chapter 12. That's right after John chapter 11. And verse 1 and 2, it says, Now six days before the Passover celebration began, Jesus arrived in Bethany, the home of Lazarus, the man he had raised from the dead. The Bible says is that this sickness will not cause to death, but it will be done for the glory of Almighty God. And chapter 12, verse 1 says, six days before the Passover celebration, before Jesus was to go to the cross, six days, Jesus finds himself at the house, not of Martha, 
at the house, not of Mary, but the word says, in the home of Lazarus, the man that he had raised from the dead. And if that's not enough to make you shout, the Bible says, and they then gave a dinner, and there was Jesus as the honor. There was Martha, who was doing the serving, and the Bible says that Lazarus was among those who ate with him. Can you give God praise right there? Because the story, y'all, is that not only did Lazarus get up, but Lazarus started worshiping God. The story, y'all, is not only did Lazarus come from the grave, the Bible says that Lazarus went to the table. The story, y'all, is that not only did Lazarus became a living testimony just because of his history, but Lazarus became a living example that God can do anything but fail. You see, Lazarus was healed, healed for his soul, healed in his body, healed in his spirit. There's a healing for Lazarus' sorrow, healing for his pain, healing in his shivering shelter from the rain. There's a balm in Gilead that was given to Lazarus. And I just want to offer that balm to you this Sabbath day. I, I want to offer a chance for you to recognize God is asking and inviting you to get up. God is saying, come my child, come my daughter, my son, come my brother, my sister, come to the heavenly throne because there's healing. Healing. There's healing for your soul, healing for your situation, restoration. There's a balm in Gilead. There's a balm for you right today. And I pray that this word will help you come closer to Almighty God. We pray that not only the words and the music has ministered to your heart, but we pray that you are now going to minister to somebody else. Please share this video, uh, share the comments. If you want the PowerPoint slides, just email me. I'll be more than happy to send them to you. Email the church. We'll be more than happy to share. But it's important that we recognize that God is calling us to get up. God is calling us to move up. God is calling us to be better people. Do you know that we love you? We care about you? Subscribe to the YouTube. Subscribe to the Facebook page. Call the church. We do all we can to minister to you in this pandemic time. And again, if you're looking for a church home, simply write right there in the chat box, I want to be a member of this ministry. We want you to be a part of the church. We love you. We care about you. I want you to have a great day in the Lord and know it's time for you to get up to your place in your house of praise. Do know that we greet you in Jesus' name. Look forward to seeing you next Sunday, next Sabbath day. Have a wonderful day and a blessed Sabbath day. God bless you.